I don't know about you, but me, I can't bear another second without part two of Verification Final Inspection. Good morning! Yes, I know it might not be morning where you are, but every once in a while I get to say that. I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where we are going to pick up right where we left off last week and jump into part two of verification and final inspection. I said we were going to pick up right where we left off, and that is exactly what we are going to do. A couple things to mention again. Verification final inspection should be a quick double check of what's coming back from the lab. Now, last week I talked about that you really don't have a lot of control over some of the, well, garbage that comes back from some of the vision care plan labs. You have complete control over the quality of the work that comes back from the lab that you actually do business with. One to one, you buy from them and sell directly to your own customers. If they keep sending you garbage and you have a constant struggle with verification final inspection, find another lab. May I suggest Laramie K. Remember that verification final inspection is of both the frame and the lenses. 90% of your customers really don't care about the lenses at all unless they have some giant scratch on them or they can't see through them. They're really concerned about the frame. So start with your frame. Be picky about those, maybe a little bit more than about lenses. Shorts, shoes, and glasses. If I go downtown later this afternoon, I buy a pair of shorts and I bring them home and I put them on and they fall down around my ankles, I don't wear the shorts. I bring them back and I get a size smaller. If I go online and I buy a pair of shoes and I get them home, I put them on and they're killing my feet. I mean, painful, horrible. They feel like they're two sizes too small. I don't wear the shoes. I send them back and I get two sizes up. If I go downtown or I go online and I buy glasses and I get them and they don't work, I send them back. I don't wear them. Look, no one is going to die here when we're talking about applying these standards and tolerances. Well, what if I fill a expired prescription and somebody drives and gets into an ad? It just, God, nobody is going to die here, okay? Get, get over that nonsense. You're not helping our profession. Why do we have standards? Why do we have ANSI? Why do we bother to check so that you get what you paid for. And lab bills are expensive. If you order a minus seven, you wanna make sure you get a minus seven, plus or minus the tolerance that is allowed in the industry. Hence, you pass that on and make sure that your customer gets what they paid for. Really important, right? They did the refraction. They said number two was better. That was a minus 650. Make sure they get a minus 650. The real reason why do we have industry standards? To cover your ass. Reduce. New customer, they put on the glasses, they say, these don't work. Oh God, no, and they're taking the new pair uh, off and putting the old ones on and back. No, my old ones are better. Like, oh no, this is not good. They're gonna have to go back to their doctor and you wanna make damn sure that what you dispensed meets the industry standards. Even if that means compensated lens design, which most people don't even understand. So you might want to check that video out. Touching on this, we got two more words to cover and then we'll get to the math. There are two terms that we absolutely positively must understand before we talk about applying tolerances, applying the math of tolerance to an eyeglass lens. One of them is subjective. Subjective means that something is open to the interpretation of a human. Feelings, thoughts, beliefs, things like religion, politics, eyeglass prescriptions, open to human interpretation or perception. 
Refraction, which is better, one or two, is a subjective measure. Really, really important. Lenses, as worn by a human being, are subjective. They are open to human perception. Remember, focal length change, vertex. We've all heard the story of the crazy lady who swears she's completely blind without her minus 0.50 OU glasses. Lenses, as worn by a human, are subjective. Super important thing to keep in mind before you go applying standards as some kind of law. A manual lens meter, the moment you put a human in front of it, becomes a subjective tool. If you're young, you can accommodate and you sit there and you rock that power drum back and forth. God only knows where you're going to end up. Subjective. Objective means that we have completely removed or done every possible thing to put a check on the human interpretation of a finding. Well calibrated, well maintained electronic measuring tools are objective measures. A properly maintained and well calibrated auto lens meter a dual lens mapper, an electronic measuring device. Those are objective. It takes out the human element. Manual tools, how we got along for thousands of years, a properly calibrated set of calipers, perfectly good objective tool. For goodness sakes, a ruler, a PD stick, assuming it's a good one, an objective tool. Lenses. Lenses are objective. We've got all that great math and science that we can prove exactly what a lens does and how light moves and its focal length. It's objective. It's, it's a beautiful thing. The minute we take that objective lens and place it on a human being, it becomes subjective. So just remember, remember our scale, we're weighing out our customer satisfaction versus the interpretation of these tolerances that we're talking about, you have to balance those things. There is a difference between an aircraft mechanic and an optician. Aircraft mechanic, she works on the Boeing 737 engines. If she messes up, 350 people will die. She is measuring an objective item, let's say it's an O-ring, against an objective standard, give or take so much tolerance on either side, and placing it back into an objective tool or an engine, okay? that's very different. And there's a lot weighing on her decision making. An optician is taking an objective tool, a lens, putting it against, hopefully, an objective measure when we're talking about tolerance, but subjective by its creation, because a human chose the power that it, the lens is, and then we're gonna turn around and we're going to put it back on a human, making it further subjective. I really need you to stop for a second. This is really, really important for you to understand. There is a difference between these two things. There is a difference between a subjective and an objective measurement. And just please, just never forget that we're talking about something that we are placing on humans. And humans have different perceptions. Let's take a look at two examples of how we actually apply tolerance. Now, the first thing, if we're working with something intricate enough that it requires tolerance, we want to make sure that we're applying it the correct way. So find your chart, whatever that might be, and just look at it. Read your columns, read your rows, look for any notes at the bottom. Make sure you understand exactly which tolerance you're applying and why before you go making any judgment calls. All right, I'm gonna run through two case examples. This is our first one. You ordered 
plus 875 minus 475 at 88. Where you work, you are extremely fortunate. You have a beautiful high-end auto lens meter set to read to the nearest 0 0.125 or eighth diopter step. You put the glasses into the auto lens meter, line up everything just like you should. You hit the print button and the ticket prints out and it says it's a plus 8.875 minus 4.625 at 86. It is one eighth of a diopter strong in the sphere and one eighth of a diopter weak in the cylinder. Not terribly unusual actually. So let's figure out first what our tolerance is. Let's grab our ANSI sheet and read it correctly. Sphere meridian power stronger than plus 650. We certainly have that. That tells us our tolerance is plus or minus 2%. I read across and it tells me a cylinder value of greater than 450. Certainly have that is plus or minus 4%. And I look down a little bit more. Tolerance on the direction of cylinder axis. Anything over 1.5, certainly over 1.5, gives me plus or minus two degrees. So that's where that stuff comes from. Good, 2%, 4%, plus or minus two degrees. What is my allowable tolerance for 875? It is plus or minus 2%. 8.75 times 0 0.2 gives me 0 0.175. You're with me? Okay. So I've already done that for you. There's my 0 0.175. 8.75 plus 0 0.175 is 8.925, 8.75 minus 0.175 is 8.575. This range, this number to this number, is the range of tolerance for 8.75 when we have two plus or minus 2%. Now, you have to be super, super careful here. It is so easy to go wrong. This side of our board, we are comparing what we were supposed to have, what we ordered, what we want. What is the tolerance for the number we actually wanted? What did we get? We got this. Does this fall between here and here? Sure, like right about there, right? So within that tolerance, our sphere checks out. 475, 4.75 times 0.04 is 0.19. That's my tolerance in diopters. 4.75 plus 0.19 is 0 0.494. 4.75 minus 0.19 is 4.56. The range of tolerance for 4.75 plus or minus 4% is this. Does what I actually got back from the lab, 0.4625, fall between these two numbers? I'd say, yeah, it's probably like right about here somewhere, right? My cylinder checks out. So far, so good. I am told that my axis can vary as much as plus or minus two degrees. What do I have? I wanted 88. What do I have? 86. My range, 88 plus two, 90, 88 minus two, 86. There is my 86. I am good. This job would pass. I could call up my customer and say, hey, come on in, pick up your glasses. That is it. There is no Prentice's formula. There is no what if. There is no comparing anything to something else. There's your tolerance. That's what you ordered. This is what you got. It falls within the tolerance allowed for those powers. You're good to go.
Let's do one more. Are you ready for example number two? Good, here we go. You ordered a minus 925 minus 325 at axis 93. You have got a gorgeous high-end auto lens meter set to read to the nearest 0.125 or eighth diopter step. You place the glasses in the auto lens meter, line everything up correctly, hit the print button, and the ticket tells you you actually have a minus 950, minus three at 92. Are you going to be able to call up the customer and tell them to come and pick up their glasses or not? Let's figure out what tolerance is for 925, 325, and 93. Well, let's see. Sphere meridian power stronger than 650, certainly. Tells us we have plus or minus 2%. Our cylinder falls between minus 2 and minus 450. So that gives us 0 0.15 plus or minus. And obviously our cylinder value is well over 150, so we have two degrees there. We are taking the tolerance for what we actually wanted. 9.25 times 0.02 gives us our 2%, which is plus or minus 0.185. 9.25 plus 0.185, 9.35. 9.25 minus 0.185 gives us 9.06. Does what we actually got, minus 950, fall between here and here? The range of tolerance of 2% plus or minus for the 925 we actually wanted? No, it doesn't. Be out here someplace. It's no good. No, job would not pass for spear power. Let's see what happens with our cylinder. Our cylinder 325 plus 0.15 gives us 3.40, 3.25 minus 0.15, 3.10. Does our three fall between here and here? No, it would be here. It's outside the tolerance range for this given power. Cylinder, no. I'm gonna have to reject this job. Would axis have made it, just for curiosity's sake, 93 plus two is five, 93 minus two is 91. Hey, we have a winner. Okay, our axis actually would have been okay, but well. Too bad. That job would go back to the lab to be remade. You could not call the customer and tell them to come and pick up their glasses. They fall outside of tolerance. And that is all there is to it. Next week, we have verification final inspection part three, where we tackle vertical imbalance. In the meantime, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there on the corner. If you're watching me on YouTube, if you're watching us on Facebook, please give us a like and make sure that every lens you're doing verification, final inspection, applying of tolerances to comes from Laramie K.